How you doing, folks? It's a nice day. I love it. I think spring might be here. It kept telling us it was here, and then it turned back to winter. We had some 75, 76 degree days, two of them in a row, and it turned right around and got cold and snowed. I was worried about my peach trees, my apple trees, and pear trees. Uh, some They were blossoming, starting to blossom good, especially my peach I was worried about. I plant in the north, I plant Alberta peaches. They grow really good here. But you gotta have them uh, some type of a backdrop off of a building or a bank or something, south facing, and then they grow good, uh, believe me. I gotta dig a hole about three foot deep and three foot square, and I fill, fill it full of composted uh, horse manure, composted hay, you know, for where we feed. We just pile it up every year, and then you, you got great dirt. And that that's keeping them roots from freezing out because that's nice and loamy. I get good peaches, trust me. Um, I'm going to show you something kind of neat here. I uh, got my Mako in the shop, and we're doing some service. And I ain't washed it. It's still dirty. Uh, but I, I had to clean the fork seals, um, clean the front brake pads because that one fork seal started weeping. Yeah, they had dirt in them. I got it out. I'll show you how to do that at some point, which I will. Uh, we're going to have a little more on the bikes here, just kind of mixed in videos. The one I haven't ever showed you is my KTM 250. I've got a, a, a quite a nice 1995. It's a one-year bike. Uh, it's got a great, great bike. I'll have to show you that video, but I'm going to carry you on the other side and just give you a little quick flash of this thing. That's a pretty old girl, even dirty. Isn't that something there's a carburetor you actually get to? How do you like that, to put a bale instead of screws so you can actually work on it? Isn't that funny? Now, that's a 82 Honda CR125. No, Mako didn't copy Honda. Honda copied Mako. That's good. That's a good bike. I like riding this one a lot. I really do. Yeah, an amazing. Still, still over here. I'm gonna let you guys forget when I got this new phone that I didn't know anything about flipping the view. And I'm gonna grab one of these. So I'll put it back the other way and not wear anything with lettering on it and not show the stove. And I'll show you the first and only left-handed chainsaw in the whole world i'll get somebody on it those of you that are regular on this channel uh i won't get you i know it. i'll get somebody doing that that'll be funny i got a box in the mail i was all running tractor actually I was picking up logs in front of the shop and didn't want them out there and put them on the edge of the field that's uh, box holder it uh not 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 good wood but it was nice out there to Use it just to uh, test saws, but I used them up. They just cut in little, little chunks. This year, I didn't cut all the way through when I was testing saws out. Uh, I left about that much on the bottom so I could pick them up. Last year, I was careful, man. I had all them rounds. We got a box from Tony Altabella. Is that what it is? Right, Tony, what, what, what are you doing, buddy? Um, I always get a little puzzled. If, uh, and sometimes, you know, people's ask me, hey, Harv, I got this saw, uh, I'm not using it, I don't want it, uh, it's broke, or it's a good one, or whatever, and, uh, I always have a heads up, but this ain't a saw, it's something else, a little bit, it's a puzzle box, that's what it is, it's a darn puzzle box. There we go. We're getting somewhere. <clears throat> Pretty pro job of packing here, Tony.
Tony Alto 1014. That's a screen name. No way. Yep. Fordham Grinder. I seen the one he sent to Tin Man. Tin Man is like kind of all happy with that thing, you know. Jeez, I've never had one of these. Uh, the only thing I've ever had is I is and I still got, but it doesn't work. Uh, is an, a little small angle grinder. It was air powered though, that uh, to get on the inside of uh, things where I couldn't reach. Uh, this one's got the angle already there. Look at that, Tony. Why? I mean, I think this is crazy. Boy, look at the freaking boy. Does that ever feel nice? You know what? Way back in the day, we didn't even know what the word ergonomics mean. But now when you get older, when I can sit there and I can hold that, I can put one finger here and my thumb here, and that feels good. My poor hands hurt from running a chainsaw for many, so many years of vibration. That, and you know what's neat? You can roll that right around so easy. Yeah. This is crazy stuff. Tony, uh, man, I owe you big, buddy. I swear I do. Look at these freaking components. You know what? I had been looking at them a few months ago. I don't know why I didn't buy one. Probably because I didn't have the darn money. Oh, check it out. It's got the straight head with it. Right in that. That's the straight head. There. That must be the key. I'm not going to open that just yet. Because I need to hang this up, and I know I do. Foot switch. I learned in machine shops, when you have something like this with a foot switch, you have control like you've never seen. Tony says, Harvey, Dremels are awesome. I use mine often. These setups have more grunt. Yes, Tony, they do, don't they? I think you like it for some small jobs that you cannot get your automotive grinding tools into. I do use a Dremel. The quarter-inch stuff I use for the, the big heads, uh, you know, the V8. I do build a lot. Of, well, not as many as I used to, but I do I do build V8s. And uh, I still build a few. Uh, he had to... Apparently, he, he says, I had to cut a few of the burr shanks short for the tiny cylinder, so I sent you some extras. Yeah, I can see that, because they're, they're about yay long, the mate inch are. It's not a big deal to grind them down, is it, Tony? Ah, uh, uh, Tin Man had something to do with this. He says, all the best. Tony all told 1014 P.S. I got your address from the Tin Man, so he's definitely an accomplice in this caper. It was a little smiley face. Tin man, buddy. You had something to do with it, too. I'll thank you personally for that. Tony, thank you so much. You don't, you know, a lot of what happens now using these Dremels and, and one thing or another. My hands, well, you just see that, you know, they look like they hurt, don't they? They do. There's some days I can't bear to pick one up. This will change my game now. Uh you want to do good work, get good tools. I've done for years with Dremel, done just beautiful stuff. That is a good tool, Dremel is, for people getting started porting. I've done this a long time. It was time to step the game up, wasn't it, Tony? And you knew it, and I thank you. Let's take a look at this. I'm really curious about the flex shaft, if you want to know the truth. I've got one for my... Uh, for my uh, uh, little Dremel, but I quit using it there about nine, ten months ago, and I'll tell you why. The it it was it's too small. And it was straight. It vibrated like nuts. I think Tin Man told me the same thing about his, so I'm in agreement with that. That is a, a heavy motor. Maximum 18,000 RPMs. I generally a lot of toolings between 13 and 15,000 uh, with the Dremel. Let's see. I'm going to tell you a little trick. Uh, I used a double cut 
not the single cut burrs. I used the double cut. They have that little cross hatching in it. Uh, Tony, I see you kind of like the same thing. You can see that. How it, it, it likes the little points there. It, uh, that's a double cut. I like them for aluminum. Do not overspeed your tool. If you're starting to get tool uh, aluminum buildup on your tool, slow that thing down. Uh, I use soapy water. Uh, I see some of you guys use alcohol one thing or other. Somebody even mentioned vodka. I was like, wow, that's kind of... All right. I understand alcohol would work. But I do use, I use uh, just light soapy water. And just a little spit spits, I put it in the Windex container, and uh, that's what I do. But, uh, so this thing just hangs up. I can see how that drives that. It just kind of snaps right in. Let's look at that. Yeah, I'm not going to snap it in right now because i got to put this all together. Uh, well, wait not. Let's just open this up. Been doing some spring cleaning this weekend, Colin and I. I don't want to wear my Colin out. We got a lot to do yet. Hey, we're going for a ride with the bikes. I can tell you right when it's going to be if you're in the area. Um, it's going to be at Tall Pines. I believe it to be the Friday the 14th. We're going to be at Tall Pines in Andover, New York. They got, uh, you can Google that and look that up. We'll be there most of the day. If you guys are close enough and you want to come ride, ride with us. We're going to have uh, motocross bikes. We're going to have four-wheelers and side-by-sides because Colin's got, he's just yanking to try out his new side-by-side. -side. Well, it's used, but it's new to him. Yeah, I like that. That's definitely something I'm going to use a lot, Tony. A lot, buddy. It, uh, it's going to take care of these old man's hands, ain't it? I know it is. I think that indexes to where it's supposed to be by just turning it. Before I snap that in, I'm going to put just a little lube. I know all about this stuff. It'll save the day. It really will. Tony, oh yeah, you get a hold of me. I'll send you my email. Okay, I want to talk to you. Uh, I want you on a phone call, if you don't mind. Is that all right? Now, I grew up in this little Canisteo Valley. It's on Route 119, actually, in a little hamlet called Adrian. I grew up right here. And as a little kid, I got up way early, way early. And I, I'm talking two, three years old, four. Uh, I, I had a, enjoyed a lifetime of memories before I ever went to kindergarten. And I'd sit on that front porch of our house and wait for the sun to come up. Now, they still run steam engines through here on the railroad. Railroads down uh, in the center of the valley, you know. We're up on the north side where it's a little higher away from the river. But it's a very narrow valley. So them trains get pretty loud coming through here. Well, them old steam engines, boy, they were silky smooth. They didn't make much noise. And pretty sound of whistle. And it, I just so fascinated with them steam engines. And, and the fact that my grandfather Wright was a fireman on New, New York Central Railroad with steam engines. Uh, and then he retired, obviously. Uh, he had a lot of stories to tell, so... I paid attention, I really did. So, I remember the first diesel locomotive that went through. They were they were loud. That thing scared the crap out of me. It was 6.10 in the morning, yes. I remember the time, 6.10. I'll tell you why I knew that. Boy, when that thing blew its whistle, I had a horrible loud thing. And it blew its whistle and it just shrieked and it sounded terrible. I ran in the house. Scared is 610. Mm -hmm. And it was on a Saturday or a Sunday morning because my parents weren't up yet. Dad went to work, uh, he worked night shift back then 
it uh, Ingersoll ran as an all dresser ran. But across the way was my grandmother Wright's house. And she was the one that always had the piney bushes in the yard and and lots of flowers and rose bushes and you know, just uh, whatever she had lavender she had bluebells she had everything she had flowers everywhere and the driveway was slightly to the right and beside that was her garage right by the road her house was set back so you had a long driveway and I got an idea nobody actually dug the driveway down because you know the yard came and then the driveway was lower and then to the right was the garage where she kept uh, vehicles and one of the vehicles that was in there happened to be a 1932 Ford Victoria. Yeah, the one everybody calls a Vicky. My grandfather Wright, I remember him as a young lad. He'd go in there and work on that car, and I don't know what he was doing, but I know I had a 49 Merc Mercury uh, flathead V8 in it with eight Stromberg 97 carburetors. I remember that. I remember when him and his uh, old crony buddy used to he used to come up and they'd get to giggle and laughing and tee hee and hit him with little brown bottles, you know. They, yeah, you know the deal. And uh, Grandma didn't know all about that. I think she did, but he wasn't doing nothing wrong. And I remember the conversation. Grandma wanted Dad to go over and look and see about. Uh, she's nervous. She says. He's going to get that car running or ain't he? Dad looked at it. Ah, oh, I don't think he'll get that running. I just don't. And he says, all right. Well, I remember one evening. There's an old brown bottle sitting all over. Right around the outside of the garage, you know, there was little shelves. They were sitting on shelves. He always cleaned them up. Didn't grab a lot grandma out. She wouldn't go in that garage unless she was going to get her car out. And so what happened was, one evening, all of a sudden, we heard this belching and popping and roaring. The front door of the garage was open, the man door, and smoke bellering out. And, oh, my God, he got that thing running. Boy, it didn't take him. They shut it off two, three times. Oh, it sounded like it was running pretty good. I was a little lad, knew that. Well, that was enough of that. Grandma got kind of pissed. She didn't like that idea of that car running. Oh, no. Oh, no. She says, we're not going down this road again. Maybe that's where I got this stuff. I don't know. She did something kind of mean. She really did. He was off helping somebody put up hay or something in that same summer. And she called the friend of junk man to come haul that car off. Yes, she did. Mm-hmm. Boy, he was all kinds of, you don't know that. I'll tell you what, Barb tried to pull that stunt with me. We, we'd have a real fight, but Barb would never do that. And I'll tell you why. She gets what she wants. I get what I want. On the needs, we meet in the middle, and everything's fine. But you can think you're getting away with your girlfriend, wife, whatever you got. You can think that you got the game figured out. She is always way ahead of you and using that as a tool for when it's needed. The very second, honey, what happened to the freaking front fender? Oh, and by the way, you remember that freaking other, you think when you bought that guitar, I didn't know that. How much was that now? No, no, no. Uh, uh, uh. I noticed that new chainsaw you got hit off in the corner. I, when did that crop up? Yeah, but honey, about that. I want to talk about this chainsaw. Okay, you got it? We like living indoors as men. We're not fooling nobody. They allow us to have fun. We want them to have fun, but they allow us to have fun. You women out there laughing, and I know there's one of you right now saying, well, I don't like this son of a gun. Well, that's fine. I'm just telling you the truth. If you don't like the truth, I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. This is what makes relationships go around. Uh, men and women are different. We handle socially each other. You know, when you're with the guys, you know, you're just, you're thinking simple. You're not doing 
anything to harm nobody. You're out in the shop, you're putter or something, you know. And uh, it, it's a place where that if you smoke gum, you just put it on the floor, put it in the ashtray. Nobody's going to complain about you. And it's just, it's very simple guy time. Women, you get women together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not always. And sometimes they're talking about us. We ought to be fearful of that. We don't want women together because there's always two or three that are single and they don't want if they're married or they don't want their friends to have fun. They don't want them to have a relationship if they can't have one too. So what they do is they drive them wedges in and put the needles in. Yeah, and it gets something started, don't it? It does. And now you girls out there, I'm just poking fun. But I mean a little bit of that because it is the way it is. Man, if they say anything about a woman, it's like, damn, on a bicycle dress like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, women ain't like that. Mm -mm. No. And if, if they get to talking about their girlfriends, they're gabbing about the ones that ain't there right now. And then when it changes the following week or two, the ones that ain't there right now get talked about. And don't think girls ain't checking out guys. We're ignorant to it. We don't even know. We don't know, do we? The girls know when we're looking at them. And it can, it's mostly it's just harmless. You know that. Uh, but I'm sorry. If you're advertising, I'm buying. That is being a man. Women are looking at it. Hmm, nice strong lad right there. I bet he could be a good provider. But they don't realize that. that, that they want somebody that can protect them, love them, and be kind to them. And be a good provider. Men are looking. Damn. Just like that on a bicycle. We have a lot lower expectations, you know. You, you didn't even think about, can she cook? Is she going to keep a house? Can she manage finances? It's better to let the woman, in most cases, handle your finances. It is. But you got to have that pocket money. Mm -hmm. Pocket money's good. My grandmother always raised a large garden. Now, what that meant was Grandpa had a lot of work. You know what I mean? And I always done a lot of canning, playing it out. Uh, it was a great time to grow up. It was the end of her garden, facing east. There was a great big field. That's actually where my home is right now. And uh, who would have thought, at that young of an age, looking over a barbed wire fence in a field that uh, they grew corn in, that someday, much, much later, I would have a home in that field. Could you ever imagine that? No. You should see in the woods around here. I ran across them when I was logging all these old farmsteads. Uh, way out in the boonies. Now, you got to realize people came in here in the late 1700s. Okay, mid 1700s, late 1700s. So some of these farmsteads were very old. Well, there wasn't much around back then. Well, they sure went to a lot of trouble to get out further. You can see the old uh, wagon traces, uh, you know, this where horse and buggy, horse and wa farm wagons went, if you know what you're looking for. Stone walls, stone barn foundations and how, uh, house foundations that are incredibly built. But the stone walls, they'll go for miles, some of them. Some of them only go... You know, eight to a mile or so, and then turn a corner, and they probably did something different after that. Who knows? But that was picking stone out of the field when they're plowing with horses and throwing it off the end of the field, and then finally getting to build a stone wall out of it. And most of them around here are two and a half to three feet wide, four to five feet tall, generally. Um, but the way they put together, just you can just imagine. The type of person it took that was that good with stone to build the stuff that was is still standing today. You can run across old horse-drawn farm equipment right out in the woods. Uh, been more than one skitter ran over something they didn't know what was. Where the, you would never imagine people lived. Uh, 
Boy, you know, our old uh, pioneers in this area and all the way through New England, they really had it tough. No wonder they died by the time they were 40, generally. They worked themselves to death. I've played with draft horses. I work with them, but I've played, you know, I'm not trying to support myself and my family with them. But I'm going to tell you right now, that is hard darn work. If you want to try a, a real challenge, you hook a one-ton draft horse uh, to a plow and uh, I walk behind and you try plowing. Yeah, every time you hit a rock, it throws you right on the ground. And this is all we got around here in most cases. But yes, it does. That throws you right on the ground. Those of you uh, uh, worked with draft horses, you, you get right in them comments and you tell them what it must have been like for the pioneers working with horses. Well, they didn't know anything different. They must have just been dumbfounded by the first tractors they got, you know. They, they just must have. It was it's just amazing. But we had a, uh, my grandmother had an apple orchard up on the uh, south-facing hill, you know, uh, on the end of her property. She had five and a half acres. And, oh, my goodness sakes, we had apples to eat of all kinds. And one variety that she had quite a few uh, apple trees of was spies. You don't see them. They take about 10 years to get a spy going. If you're in your late 20s, early 30s, and you want a really good winter keeper that makes the best apple pies you ever had, oh my goodness, get plant some spies. And plant about a half a dozen and wait. But they blossom just a little later so frost don't get them so bad. And they're a hearty apple for canning. They are. They, uh, they're they good. At, I like them for applesauce. I really do. Because they have that tart and sweet at the same time. But they're nice zippy apple. But boy, the pies. Um, if I wasn't so darn old, I uh, got myself convinced I need. You know what? Who knows? I ought to plant some anyway if I can find the darn trees. Uh, I probably have to mail order them. Because I'm going to tell you, I, I could live... A long time. Or I could be gone tomorrow. I, I don't have anything wrong with me. Uh, other than I've got this horrible chainsaw addiction that isn't going to go away. Tied in there with the dirt bikes and the old tractors and and uh, muscle cars. and It's just a conglomeration. And music. Love the music. On the other side, we got a band room. It's fully loaded. we got a sound stage. Uh, everything. It, these are the things that truly wrap my world up they really do when i have time for them guys i'm really happy you're here tony you don't know man yeah you, you just might have saved my poor old hands you know you just might have and i'm definitely going to be trying this out in two days and we're going to see what they're really about i'm i'm really looking forward to this journey i really am Ten man Hi, buddy. Buck and Billy, if you're still here, hi, buddy. I ain't bucking no watch all the time because he's got so much on the go, but I know he does sometimes. And uh, I want to recognize all the new subscribers. I see there's a bunch of you. Welcome to the channel. You old uh, subscribers, you're, you've been gold to me. We have the best community of subscribers that there is. I'll put them against anybody straight away. The very best. Get in the comments. Hit that like button. It makes the uh, algorithm work better for uh, YouTube. If you don't like the video, don't. But if you like the video, give me a thumbs up so we can get this uh, uh, views back in order. Every spring, the views drop. And then there's this point. I know why. It's, it's spring. It's good weather. It's nice weather everywhere. And then all of a sudden, when the summer heat builds, and all of you, everything goes back. And I'm the same way. There's some of you out there that I watch your videos, but when I'm busy, I don't answer my WhatsApp. I don't answer my phone. I We don't have no cell service here. But my WhatsApp works off the internet. It, I throw the phone on the table, forget it, go out about minutes all day long. 
at nighttime when I'm done, I look at, oh my goodness sakes, I got to answer these guys. I generally answer my uh, messages, my emails in the morning, and, and I catch up with those of you that I'm with. If you want to ride at Tall Pines with us, Friday, May 14th, Andover, New York. Look them up. Okay, later, guys. Bye.